Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. As long as Harry did not marry Meghan, the entire palace was in love with him. He was wearing, and you only wanted the best for them. Still, what they did afterward did not surprise the palace, the whole of England was shocked by it. Megan, seriously? Why oh you have turned everything upside down? Please watch the video in its entirety, as there are exciting items at the end. And how was your day? Everything is as usual with us, we are fine. So, before she became Harry's wife, Meghan Markle was already interested in others due to her biography. One can feel that she has a rather controversial biography. Meghan Markle's problems began before the wedding with Harry. Meghan was engaged in yachting and became a briefcase model, her financial support was ambiguous. In this sense, the royals were not as demanding as many wanted them to be. They accepted Meghan as easily and quickly as possible. Such an attitude was primarily due to deep affection and the desire for Harry to be happy. Many members of the royal family told Harry that he should not be in a hurry. However, he figured it was okay not to listen. The palace did not put pressure on him and wanted to be patient and respectful of Harry's feelings. It is quite clear that they would have compelled Harry to contract someone in the spirit of the royal family just in the event. At the time, there was no significant information about Meghan, just as there is not one now. I remember that Meghan Markle played in suits as Rachel Zane, her companion's love interest, but did not recognize her as a person. Therefore, the palace had to do its best not to influence Harry toward his likeness. As a result, the blame for everything that happened with Meghan should be placed on her. It is quite obvious that she and Harry are not friends and not through love, but on a common occasion. If Meghan's love for Harry were genuine, she would not have allowed him to move to California. She would have reached a compromise with him and would work with full commitment for the royal family. Meghan behaved in a similar way throughout her life, showing disrespect for the monarchy. If karma overtakes Meghan Markle, it will be hard to fault the monarchy. Before moving to America, there was gossip that William said that Harry would be able to return home when Charles fell seriously ill with cancer. One of the reasons is that Harry's behavior in recent years has been appalling, but placing the burden for reconciliation with Harry on Prince William seems to be unjustly. Richard Eden, a royal expert, notes that even for the latter's brother it seems grossly unfair. Several of them believe that despite the harsh accusations of the royal family by Harry and Meghan, it should be William's initiative to make the first step in reconciliation, given the diagnosis of King's cancer. For instance, in a recent Palace Confidential newsletter it is written that William also believes the expectations on him are unrealistic and unjust. Therefore, the appalling acts of Harry and Meghan in recent years have undoubtedly contributed to the mental suffering of betrayed members of the royal family. According to a source close to William and Catherine, Harry should also offer a sincere apology to them before they can talk again. Once he learned about his father's illness, Harry said that he wanted to fly out to him. Eden reports that it is clear from my friends that Harry's spontaneous decision to fly to Britain was taken very quickly. No sooner was it announced that King Charles has started treatment for cancer and Harry decided that he would visit. These statements have caused an uproar in the media, with many calling for Prince Charles to take this opportunity to reconcile with his brother. However, William showed no interest in even meeting Harry soon. After being in Britain for just 24 hours, Harry seemed somehow compelled to leave the country and pay for his own London accommodation. He met with the king at Clarence House for just over 30 minutes, much less than he had sat with Princess Beatrice and her husband the day before. Richard Eaton laments that there is a strong sense in royal circles that William is under unjust pressure to welcome Harry back into the fold and that he should not have to do that. As much as Eaton argues that at least no one should be required to welcome Harry back to Britain. The wind angers me. Harry is an irritating presence. He is irrelevant, distracting, and dangerous. William is the exact opposite. 
He is forgiving and patient, loyal and kind. He tolerates too much. His brother's jealousy is unjust. He could not forgive Ophelia, he should not forgive Harry. These two are a menace to their family. Years from now, Harry will attempt to persuade him again. He will need funds just as much as he does now that his father is king, he has worn out the emotional allowance. If he is trying to rebuild relationships simply because he needs William to finance his debt once again, then William should not forgive him. The damage Harry and especially Meghan did to their family cannot be undone by an apology. For Harry, likely, when he involved Catherine in the battle, his father's resolve not to forgive him was solidified. Although Harry has been swayed by Meghan's ideas during this ordeal, he has not stood up to her. It is unsettling to think that Harry lacks wisdom. However, by his intelligence and his clear understanding of responsibility, William will not let anyone be worried. William's behavior, commitment, and readiness show that the royal family is prepared to take over the monarchy. I wish that Prince William and Kate had more time as Wales's, and before William became king, King Charles could enjoy the fruits of his reign for a few more years. As Prince George is only eight years old, and despite what Harry believes or claims, the children need the father figure around actively for a further fifteen years before King George VII. Gratefully there was no chance of Meghan returning from royal activities. It would be inappropriate for the royal family for that woman to return to Britain. Harry may never return again, therefore he will stay in California. About Harry's journey of genuflection, it was to ensure his position in the will. His actions were cruel, particularly after urging others to shun the family's negativity. His attitude and speech did not indeed appear to have had a real change of heart I doubt it would heal. Afraid is irredeemable. Harry swindled his grandparents in the worst possible manner and committed even greater sins than they did. It's his bed, so he'll have to go down in it quickly and maybe for a long time. Harry might be bitter, but that's no sure sign of redemption. Who'd want to be vulnerable to him? It's like yelling at someone. This time, Harry does not need to apologize to the royal family. Harry apologizes to the people in Great Britain. Please recollect that we are not the ones who have been defamed. The royal family is not the one that has been defamed. The whole country has been defamed. Just give it some consideration. What type of apology is needed in this situation? Even the entire country has been slandered. Do you think you can mend that relationship? Unlikely. More than that, Harry and Markle have made people's existences wretched in the prior year. Nobody inquired about how he was coping. We've all been self-centered, to liken Harry Markle's remarks. They haven't done anything to assist us. During this period, Prince Philip passed away, the Queen, King Charles and Princess Catherine were diagnosed with cancer. William and the family are doing all in their power to make everything good, and all of this is happening. Why would William be willing to let them assault everyone any further? They may be family, but when one does that to another, that is insupportable. At the same time, Harry perseveres in presenting himself as the wronged party. As for Harry, I have no idea. Shouldn't he have confronted Meghan Markle? He should have said he won't stand by as she does numerous disrespectful things. He had the opportunity to show everyone where his loyalty lies, to tell the truth. He did nothing to oppose the lying Meghan and didn't fight back against her lies in print, in interviews, or in action. His behavior has shown him to be every bit as dishonorable and morally corrupt as Meghan is treacherous, repugnant, and despicable. Yes, it's important to forgive, but the damage done might be beyond repair, the trust offered in the first place has been shattered and can't be fixed. If I were part of the royal family, I wouldn't let him near me at all, letting someone who has already broken your trust do it again will result in the same damage being done, and Harry and Meghan should be kept on the other side of a deep trench and left alone. Instead of William, let's show some genuine concern for Meghan. I'm confused why a senior family member is supposed to clean up the mess of their treacherous relative for you. Why should your family, your friends, 
your own business care that you are responsible for fixing the mess of those who caused the mess. It is your job to set a good example by forgiving. It's wrong. So, should the unfortunate have to be put through the turmoil? He has enough of his own troubles to worry about. Remember Harry and Meghan were the ones causing the chaos. So they should be the ones to step back in. William is going through enough and doesn't need to be dragged into mediating. The whole thing is confusing. I have also lost my elderly relatives, like everybody else. I have also had to assist family members who are battling cancer. As a result, when the troublesome family member, the outcast, emerges unexpectedly and behaves like he hasn't been pardoned and acts as if they are the savior, it is repulsive and stinking. They create demands, complain, engage in hundreds of foolish encounters to pretend to be helpful, ignoring the fact that they are trying to obtain another check. Isn't this period long enough? William has been the monarch's most loyal companion. For many years, he was a loyal confidant of the king and even supported him when he lost his parents. He also served as a fortress to him in the aftermath of the Harriet and Jamaica bloodbath. When he is about to restore, should that part of their history be forgotten? And he has enough on his plate, he does not have to be concerned about Harry. Not only his wonderful wife is on the mend, but also his father, who is struggling with cancer. He is currently receiving treatment, but he continues to serve with dignity. You don't have to call him. That isn't right, Harry. No, William, you do not. Do what is best. There are a plethora of people who are on your side. We don't reside in an obscure, alien, or distant future. We live in the now. We know how you are hurting and exhausted. Don't join that vibrant, misleading illusion. It's unacceptable for the media to place this demand on you. You do not have to forgive or sympathize with that irresponsible fellow. No one will apprehend you. Rather than focusing on some other worthless Rogaine, go ahead and encourage your father and spouse. Harry is reliable till he can manage. Do not waste your energy on Harry. Do not let him think he is absolved of his sins. Please stay strong and protect your father, who must be a backbone to your family during this tragedy. Stay strong and do not give Harry any reason to interfere. Do not come near him and admonish him once. He might be in trouble, and if anyone contacts William, do not let that person reach our family. I really hope William doesn't set out to find him, the returning prodigal son may be Harry and expects his family to be grateful. Do not feel that sentiment, for Harry is not the man you once knew. Harry is continuing to deteriorate his cognitive capabilities through his substance abuse. Sadly, Harry is not likely to change his ways voluntarily. He has already proven himself to be unreliable and untrustworthy, motivated primarily by greed and hate. Despite your treatment of him, he just keeps on destroying his life. Harry has very little time to get in touch with his family, including you, before it is too late. Harry needs to be the man that all of his loved ones and his country and community can be proud of. He needs to be the devoted son his father requires. Those calling on you to reconcile with Harry have not experienced this kind of pain. Remember that people across the world are supporting you, including Americans like myself. We are all pulling for you. Hang in there. This entire disastrous episode shall eventually conclude, most likely when Harry continues with the process of becoming an American citizen. Apparently, Harry has used the Frogmore move as an excuse to cut ties with his own family. If Harry desired to do so, he could have done so years ago, and to do so this route is enjoyable. There is never any influence from the firm. No one is in charge at this point. It's improper to attempt such actions. They did leave the UK of their volition and then swiftly employed libel lawyers to assault you. Furthermore, they tried to sell their only item to the highest bidder requirement their links to you, forcing the matter of solitarity consent. The final straw was Harry and Meghan reportedly recording family members' audio interactions and possibly releasing them if necessary. Still, let's not forget about Meghan Markle, 
who took pictures where she shouldn't have and then simply disappeared. The king should have thought about the royal family's security and let her go. It was undoubtedly his fault not to prolong the rental or lease of the house. It should have been easy to move if the wife even mentioned that they didn't have enough room to live. They could also come to visit the palace if it was necessary for the king to have them close or he could place them under his supervision but at a safer distance. However, both of them are trying to play in victims. Harry is definitely playing in victims a lot, and he needs validation from everyone to feel more or less decent. Nevertheless, he is not skilled, and it sounds more like he envies the king and wants to be significant more than anything else. The drug just disconnects him from any kind of reality. Megan appears stupid and unprofessional as well, she tried to fight with Marha Stewart about a brand, in my opinion. Her stupid idea of a brand was a stupid idea. Then, it is apparent that getting a part of the orchard with the stick from the king, I apologize. I meant that the first branding rule is that a brand name should resonate with and attract people, so, it should be easy to remember as well. The name American Riviera Orchard does not make any sense. I begin to think about Meghan Markle, who is the queen of word salad. My first question is what an American Riviera Orchard is. She should have tested that in the market, it was definitely not a good choice. I mean that's just basic advertising and marketing theory, you have to test it with the target audience. But she couldn't do that because she doesn't even know who the target audience is. And Megan doesn't even have to be a business genius to make a million. But, honestly, the way she approached it was really foolish, and it's clear, she didn't listen to any advice. I hope someone at some point tried to advise Megan that the name isn't a good idea, but evidently, she didn't listen, that's why we now have American Riviera Orchard. People are already joking about it. I've personally encountered Tony Dung Orchard and River Slot Orchard. Ugh, and now Martha Stewart decides to chime in. She's probably a biased source in this case, as it's quite evident that she's offended. This uncultured and deprived of talent individual is trying to overshadow Martha, who has devoted every single day to perfect her craftsmanship. So, it's quite clear that Megan really thinks that everything she does is genius. In my opinion, the American Riviera Orchard project will, without a shadow of a doubt, fail. It is evident that the influencers The Sugars and The Squatties are sponsored to endorse the brand. It is also clear that the fans themselves did not invest a single dollar of true money into jam jar acquisition. How many jam jars can they sell at $25? The jam seems to be too expensive. Megan is kidding, trying to sell regular jam for a drastically increased price because the label informs you that it's luxury and there's no other information. This business is stupid and poorly realized. I can only imagine what Harry and Meghan think of this. Tom Quinn speculates that Harry has a dim hope that one day the family will forgive him and offer him a minor role. If we judge based on Harry and Meghan, however, it is Meghan who has told the prince that he was wronged. The royal family could have done more to combat fake news or pressure the press to retract falsehoods. Still, they were not essential to go such lengths to protect Meghan, they did not like her and therefore, in Harry's eyes, whatever happened to her served her right. However, Harry believes in the striking handicap theory, the more prominent the performance, the more envious the sniping. This makes him not only devoted to Meghan but also casts impatience in others' eyes. As a result, when Harry insisted that William told him he was being duped by Meghan, it left William with no counterarguments. He's one of them, Harry believes, he doesn't see it and therefore can't be trusted. Diana may well have lumped Harry hugely thick. The Duke conceded he was not a reader and how impressed he was with Meghan's reading of Eat, Pray, Love. He seemed to trust all her stories, including the one where he believed Vanity Fair used her because of suits. It was clear Harry believed anything Meghan said. He ridiculed the royal family for negligence and embracing weird traditions, but the truth was that he began to share Meghan and Doria's opinion. Harry's beliefs were reshaped, now perceiving what he knew was right and good as bad and wrong, as well as vice versa. He was practically under the influence of Meghan and Doria, 
who continued to indoctrinate him with their beliefs. Even the sibling rivalry was amplified as Harry was immersed in their stories. Doria and Meghan shared Harry's blunders as abusive, shaping his interpretation. Doria's parenting skills were put to the test compared to Thomas Markle. After an expert analysis of their story and their views, it is evident that Meghan and Doria managed to manipulate Harry. It's a tragedy. His critical thinking skills have been utterly obliterated by these two manipulating women. However, the real concern is Harry receptive to their ideas. I am convinced he has convinced himself and Meghan that they have been treated unfairly. They believe that if they abuse their rival as much as possible verbally, the family will apologize and things will go back to normal. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.